a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Hear the sound of my pleading when I cry to you, lifting up my hands toward your holy shrine. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I find help. Then my heart exalts, and with my song I give him thanks. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is the strength of his people, the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed them and carry them forever. Blessed. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him for he loves our nation, and he built the synagogue for us. Jesus went with them, but when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I do not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. 
and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. To monk or not to monk? That would describe a significant position and part of St. John Chrysostom's life. He gets well educated, he decides to go to the monastery, he stays for a while. Then he leaves, he comes out, he's uh, actually dragged to Constantinople to be appointed to uh, be a person in authority like a bishop, dragged there, and because of his humility and because of everything that he did by addressing abuses, like uh, women were not to wear makeup in the 300s, how about that one, huh? People are not to attend races on holy days. People are to do this and to do that, and everything you're doing is not so good. Well, it was back to the monastery after that, and later on, after a few years there, he comes back and becomes, and because of his writings, because of his influence, because of his holiness and his humility, he becomes named a doctor of the church later on. He was a wonderful, absolute, faithful man to the teachings of the church. In fact, in the catechism today, so many of the references even come from him that are in the catechism of the Catholic Church today. That's amazing, isn't it? Amazing. So we have a lot to learn, and if you really want to learn a lot about St. John Chrysostom, take some time today, five or ten minutes, and read the story. It's available everywhere. You can find it. It's an interesting story about the saints who we remember today. And in addition to that, in our readings, we have some important messages, don't we? St. Paul, still writing to Timothy, says to him, I want you to continue to be prayerful because prayer is so important. And I want you to pray for people in authority. I mean, do you do that often? Pray for people in authority? Oh, we do it every day in our intentions, don't we? It's part of one of the things that the church encourages us to do today because of St. Paul's message. We pray for our government leaders and are those who are in authority. It's a part of what we're supposed to do, and we do it, so that's wonderful. And then he says, I was sent to the Gentiles. Now, all of you new Christians and all of you who are Jewish, you may not like that, that God's word is for everybody. You think it's only for you. It's not. St. Paul makes it very clear. I was sent to the Gentiles and that the word of God, there's one God, one faith, and we are all to share in that. He made that very clear. So he said to them, you Jewish people who are believing in Jesus, now come over here and be one with us who trust in the Lord. In the gospel reading, how about that? Words that we hear every day when we celebrate mass, right? Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Well. It was the servant, the slave, who was healed, wasn't it? But just think of all of the people that Jesus encountered in his ministry. Here's one unnamed person who truly believed. He didn't even see Jesus. He didn't even see Jesus, yet he believed. He had heard of what Jesus had done, and he says, just say the word. And that message is so true for us today. God does say the word to us when we receive Holy Eucharist. We say the words that we're not worthy, and none of us is worthy, but the Lord calls us to be worthy. It's him who decides, and how blessed we are to be able to do that. So today, take the message of our readings, take the message of that centurion who had such great faith. In fact, Jesus never too many times said, I'm amazed, I'm amazed that the faith of that centurion because we just heard over the weekend about St. Peter, right? He was pretty much amazed at St. Peter because he didn't believe like this centurion did yet. 
but he did. But let Jesus be amazed with us. Let the goodness of all of you being here today, the goodness of those joining us via the live stream, let the goodness of our faith be a true sign that God is amazed with you. We can do great things together. Amen.